In this video, we will demo a linear encoder working, we'll discuss how to mount them, and we'll take a look at a linear encoder project. At Fidgets Inc., we stock linear encoders from 300 millimeters to 2 meters long. We also carry alternatives to linear encoders, such as draw wire sensors and linear potentiometers. Our primary business is in making interfaces, and our encoder interfaces are powerful yet inexpensive and work with all major operating systems and major programming languages. In addition to our programming APIs, we also have some pre-built software, and I'll be using this to demo a linear encoder in this video. In our demo, we have the fidget control panel installed on our Windows computer. We're using a USB Vint hub. We have a fidget encoder interface. And we have the included adapter cable. As we're plugging these devices in, you can see them appearing in the control panel. We double click on fidget encoder. And we'll throw up a graph to help you visualize the data. As the encoder head slides along the frame of the linear encoder, we get a readout of position change 200 times per millimeter. In an actual application, frame would be held immobile and the encoder head is bolted to the moving element in your linear motion system. Our encoder interface adds up these thousands of small movements to give us a position. Since this encoder produces a pulse every five microns, a full sweep sees 60,000 changes in position. We will select linear encoder and we'll enter our resolution in pulses, five microns per pulse. And at this point, we are able to see a graph of velocity scaled to millimeters. We put a lot of effort into very accurate measurement of timing. And this becomes obvious when using the position changes to estimate velocity. This is conveniently displayed by our example. It shows how my hand motion is not at all stable. Also of note is you can see the index position being read out and we get five index events over a full translation of the encoder. Now, this is a great way of homing your system since this is far more accurate than any limit switch. I'll mention that our graphs include the ability to save to a CSV file, which is quite useful if you want to do it, perform a little bit of extra analysis without writing your own software. Most linear encoders are installed on manual lathes as a low cost aftermarket addition to get a digital readout of position. That's why they come with these weird nine pin connector. This is a harsh environment, metal chips, coolant spray, and the bottom of the encoder where the sensor feeds has been sealed with this uh, rubber seal on the bottom. And this is enough to keep small amounts of liquid and large particles out. And you can give it every chance of success by installing it upside down like this. So anything that does get in has to come in from the bottom as well. The encoder also comes with this metal shroud, which will help in directing any drips away from it. I would hesitate to use a linear encoder in a severely dusty environment because dust will eventually get everywhere, but we've been very, very happy with the performance of these, as we'll see when we get into the project. In terms of actually mounting the linear encoder, the frame itself, which is mounted to the non-moving part of your system, is quite straightforward. We have a slotted hole drilled right here that you can just bolt straight through. 
There's also vertical holes through here on both ends. The encoder head itself requires a little bit more care because this will be bolted solidly to the portion of your system which actually translates during linear motion. So as you bolt it in, you need to be careful that, and it moves, you need to be careful that it isn't binding and being stressed out and pulled out of the encoder or pushed to the side. There is a couple brackets that come with this. And these brackets have been well thought out to be able to be mounted to these mounting holes on which are available on all three sides. We have a couple screw holes right here. We have through holes that go through so you can bolt to either side of the encoder head. And we have a 90 degree version of this as well, which also gives you lots and lots of options for how to bolt it on. And if you find that none of that works for you, this is just incredibly easy to use a little piece of angle aluminum and just drill some holes and bolt it on your system. Just make sure that once it's all tightened up, that the encoder head is still free to move. It isn't binding anywhere. And if you find that you have to put your encoder back in storage, there is this little plastic slider protection element along with four small screws, which can be used to safely affix the encoder head to the end. Fidgets has been selling T-slot aluminum profiles, linear shaft, precision rotary shafts since 2016. We cut this material to custom lengths as a convenience to our customers. Making these cuts manually with consistent precision has been impossible. So we made a fidget controlled stop. The operator dials in the length and the stop uses a belt and a DC motor to move a shuttle to an exact position relative to the saw blade. We could have used a huge ball screw to create precision motion but the belt and DC motor are a lightweight, low force alternative. Now the belt and DC motor have enormous positioning errors. So we use a linear encoder bolted to the shuttle to read the true position of the stop. And conveniently, because the linear encoder is a standard quadrature encoder, we plug it into our motor controller and rely on the built in closed loop position control on the motor controller to directly control the motor. Diving into the project a little bit deeper, the linear encoder, which is right here on the end, we just shimmed it out using some washers to get it to the correct position. The shuttle assembly and the stop face is right here. This runs on just linear rail and on the top and the bottom of this T-slot and we used a little aluminum bracket to span the gap between the linear encoder down here and the shuttle frame right here. Underneath we can see the sensor. Ideally we would have put a drip guard on beside the sensor to keep cutting fluid diverted away from getting down underneath of here. Occasionally we do have cutting fluid underneath here, but in seven years it hasn't caused any problems. And finally, we see the motor that actually drives the belt back and forth on the shuttle. I expected the side load on this little gearbox here to destroy this motor immediately. Ideally, we'd have a shaft supported by two bearings to handle the tension from the belt, and then we would couple the motor into that shaft. Seven years later, we're still waiting for the gearbox to fail. This entire system, at the heart of it is the linear encoder. Having five micron position resolution makes it possible for us to offer low cost custom cutting to our customers with sub millimeter precision. In conclusion, linear encoders are the most accurate, highest resolution, practical solution for measuring position in a linear motion system. We hope that this video has made it easier for you to decide if a linear encoder is appropriate for your system.